Morning to everybody, hope you guys are doing well. Back with my coffee, morning coffee. But today I'm hanging out with somebody. And yes, virtually we're hanging out. Um, and he's got a couple of puns for you. So maybe that gave it away, but enjoy the expert punning from Mr. Richter. Why yes, it is a brutal morning, wouldn't you say? I'm sorry that I was a little latte to our meeting, and I don't mean to milk you quite like this, but you know what they say, you really got to espresso yourself correctly in the morning. Ah, All right. I got one. Want to hear it? Oh, yes. Please do tell me. All right. I know you make good coffee, but have you met my brother Pete? Um, yes? Question mark? Well, okay, bye. Well, I guess he didn't like my joke. Alright, so today we're looking at section 4-6B, which again, we're still using our number E. But now we're going to use E and look at specific economic and half-life applications. So this is a pretty interesting section. I like it um, because you get a little bit more real-world um, applications here. Now we're going to be looking at the formula for continuously compounded interest. The formula is A is equal to capital P, E raised to the RT. I just say it is a a pert. That's usually how I refer to it, a pert. And each of these um, have obviously have a specific meaning, where a is the total amount that you have. So a is the total. P is the principal, or original. E, well that's our number E. R, that is the annual interest rate. And then T, that's our time in years. So that is the meaning of our formula A pert and it's used for con continuously compounded interest. So an example of how we can use this is let's say that you have this question. What is the total amount for an investment of $1,000 invested at 5% for 10, 10 years compounded continuously? So a few things we need to look at is we're going to be using our formula A pert. what information do we have? Do we have A? Do we have P? We know what E is, so we don't have to write that down. Do we have our rates? And do we have our time? So do I have each of those pieces of information? And what am I trying to solve for? So the question asks, what is the total amount? So I don't know what my total amount is. So I don't know A. And you can kind of think about that as like your final amount. P stands for principal, what's your, or original, what's your original amount of your investment? We invest $1,000. So our original investment, our principal is 1,000. What is our rate? Our rate is 5%, or convert that to a decimal, 0 0.05. And then how long are we investing our money for it? 10 years. So I suggest always starting off by writing this out and just finding what information you have. Now the second thing we need to do is actually write down our formula with the information. So using a part, let's go ahead and fill in our information and this will give us a is equal to 1000 e raised to the 0 0.05 times t, which is 10. 
So let me write that a little bit bigger. I'm going to erase some of this so I can write it a little bit larger. So our formula is A is equal to 1000 E and the exponent of the E is 0 0.05 and 10. Those are the exponents here to E. Well, since we have our formula, we can enter the formula into our calculator to actually solve this. So what is going to be my final amount? What's my total amount after 10 years of investing at 5% interest? So to solve this, we're just going to use our calculator. So on your calculator, let me find my calculator. We can hit second ln, it's your natural log, and then we have e to the x. So that's how you access the e function on your calculator. So what we enter a calculator to solve for this is right here. We're going to do 1000 e, and again that is second ln gives you the e function. That's going to raise it to a power. Now make sure that you have in your parentheses 0 0.05 times 10. So make sure that's the exponent here. And then you hit enter and your solution is that after 10 years your total amount would be, and we have dollars, so 1648. So 1648 dollars and 72 cents. So that's how much money you would have if you invest $1,000 at 5% interest compounded continuously for 10 years. Now question B, let's say that you took $2,000 and invested it into stocks and your interest rate was 10%. Now how long would it take to reach $10,000? So notice, let's start by writing all of our, again we're using APERT, What is each piece of information? We have A, P, we don't need to write E because that's um, a number. We have R and then T. So do I have my total amounts? We're saying if $2,000 was invested, that's our starting amount. So that's not A, that is actually P, because that's what you start with as the original. And just stocks with an interest rate at 10%, so there's your interest rate, 10% or 0 0.1, remember just convert percentage, take these two dots and just take the decimal place, one, two. So your interest rate is 0 0.1, uh, how long would it take to reach $10,000? So we have our end goal, we have $10,000 as what we're trying to reach. That's our total amount. Now the question is how long or what is T? So we have all of our information. So let's go ahead and enter it into a part our formula. So 10,000 is equal to P, which is 2,000 times E raised to the 0.1 times t, so I don't know what t is. Now you'll notice that our variable is in the exponent here. So that might seem like it's an issue, but let's start solving this and we'll see how we can use this. Uh, so we want to isolate our unknown variable on one side of the equation. So our first step is going to be, I'm going to divide both sides by 2000. Those cancel, 10,000 divided by 2,000, that is going to give me 5. So I have 5 is equal to E raised to the 0.1 T. Now my next step is that I need to somehow bring that T down to the base. I don't want it as an exponent. So how am I going to somehow bring this down? Well, remember that if... I'm going to write this on the next page. So I have 5 is equal to e to 
the 0 0.1 t. Now remember, if I take the natural log of e to x, what is that equal to? Those cancel out, and I'm left with my exponent. So that's actually what we're going to do, but since I have an equation, this equal sign, I need to do it to both sides. So I'm actually going to take the natural log of both sides. And what happens is that those cancel each other out. And I'm left with the natural log of 5 is equal to, and remember, since those cancel each other out, I'm left with the exponent that comes down. So I have 0 0.1 t. Now, I just have to solve for t using basic algebra. So I divide both sides by 0 0.1. What I do to one side, I do to the other. These cancel each other out. And I'm left with t is equal to the natural log of 5 over 0 0.1. Now, in our calculator, again, I can... Um, I can hit the natural log button, and that will bring up um, natural log on your calculator. So you can hit natural log and then 5, and that will give you, come up here, um, one point six zero nine. We're dividing by 0 0.1. Now our calculator can do 1.609 divided by um, 0 0.1. And you'll be left with 16.09 years. So the answer to this question is it would take, because we're looking for time, 16.09 years to get up to $10,000 if you invested $2,000 at an interest rate of 10%. That's why these questions are kind of interesting because it allows you to make um, uh, predict how long it would take or predict how much money you would have in the future. Next question. I'd like you guys to pause the video and try this one on your own. The question states, what is the total amount for an investment of $100 invested at 3.5% for eight years and compounded continuously? So to solve this one, I have A, P, R, T. We're looking for the total amount, so I don't know what that is. My principal, I invest $100 at 3.5%, which is 0 0.035. And for eight years, my time is eight years, so my formula is A is equal to 100E raised to 0 0.035 times eight. When you enter that into your calculator, you get approximately 132.31 dollars. All right, so let's move on to half-life. Now what is half-life? The half-life of a substance is the time it takes for half of the substance to break down or convert to another substance during the process of decay. So you have some type of material and we're gonna say the half-life is the amount of time for it to decay to where you only have half of it left or to turn into another substance. And we're going to say that our function, our natural decay function or model is right here. And notice it's the same thing as a pert. Um, we're just using a different looking formula. But it's basically the same thing. So we start with NT. Now NT stands for the amount remaining or 
your total amount or the amount that you have left over after a certain amount of time. We have in that, which is the initial amount, which is like our principal or the original amount. Again, we have E and then K, that symbol right there, just K, ignore the negative. That is our decay constant. So our decay constant is um, basically the rate at which something breaks down. Now the negative indicates that it's decay. It's in the case that you're taking away. It's um, you're losing the substance. Um, and then T is just like this, just the amount of time. So notice the similarities between both of these functions and it's pretty similar concepts. But we'll see that there's actually one more step to solve a half-life half -life problem. So let's look at our paleontology application. Now this is taken from the book, so you can always refer back to the book to review this question. Uh, it's a pretty good question. Good question for like a test or a quiz possibly. But the question states that a paleontologist uncovers a fossil of a saber-toothed cat in California. He analyzes the fossil and concludes that the specimen contains 15% of its original carbon-14. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Now use the carbon-14 dating to determine the age of the fossil. Now personally, um, this type of question doesn't appeal to me. I like the more economic questions, but I know that some people like the paleontology questions, which is totally fine. All right, so let's look at how to solve this question. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is find what the constant of decay is. So what is k? That's what I need to find. Now, the question states that the half-life for carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So what that means is, let's just say that we take one unit of carbon-14. Now, after 5,730 years, We'll be left with half of that unit. So that's the idea of half-life. That's what um, it means when you're given this type of information. And how is that useful to solve this type of question? We need to find the constant of decay for a carbon-14. I'll be using our formula for the natural decay. But what's our initial amount? What's our final amount? What's our time unit? Um, and I don't know what k is, because remember, I'm trying to solve for k right there. So what we're going to do is just use this information. There's two steps to this. The first step is plugging this in. So my initial amount is, let's just say 1. I'm just going to assume that I have 1 unit of carbon-14. My time is going to be 5,000. 730 years, and after that amount of time, I'll be left with the half. So that is how we enter the information oops, to start with. That is our first step. We get this formula, this equation. So there's the half. We start with one unit of carbon-14. I don't know what k is, my constant of decay, and that's the amount of time, the half-life for carbon-14. Now to solve this, all we're going to do is, just like our economics application, I need to somehow bring this exponent down so I can solve for the unknown variable k. So to do that, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides because remember, when you take the natural log next to E, they cancel out and you're left with the exponent. So I natural log both sides of the equation. And then I will have ln of 1 half is equal to, those cancel, I'm left with 5,730k. And real quick, all I did was swap these two to bring the 5,730 to the front, which is totally fine. Now to solve for k, I'm going to divide both sides 
by negative 5,730. And you can use your calculator. You hit natural log of 0.5. And then when you hit natural log of 0.5, that will give you the negative 0.6931. It keeps going. And then you're going to divide by the negative 5,730. When you do that, you will get your constant of the K, which is 1.20968 times 10 to the negative fourth, or when you have the negative fourth, you're just gonna move the decimal place four places this way to the left. So K is equal to 0 0.0001. So that is your constant of decay. Now that is step one. Step two, we're going to actually write the decay function and then solve for time. Because remember, our question is saying is asking us to use carbon-14 to determine the age of the fossil. So our second step is that we're again going to be using our um, function for natural decay, but this time we're going to substitute the value of k, the constant of decay, into our equation. And notice that the, even though we have a positive k when we solve for it, that negative right here, that indicates the k. So now we plug in our information to the formula, and now I can use all the information given from the first part of the question. Our initial amount, which is 100, and the reason that it's 100 for our initial amount is that since we have a 15% of the original, the specimen contains 15% of the original amount, we're going to say that if we start with 100, 15% would be 15. You could also do 1 and then 0.15. That would be okay, but let's just use the example I have in the book, how they do in the book. So you start with 100, 15% of 100 is 15, so that's our final amount. We have our constant of decay, and we're trying to solve for the time. How long would it take to get from here to here at the constant of decay? So I divide both sides by 100, and notice that you get the 0.15, so it might be easier to use 1 and then 0.15. to kind of saves a step, but it's fine. Now I need to bring, I need to solve for t, so I need to bring that down. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. I take the natural log of both sides. These guys cancel each other. I'm left with the exponent that comes down. And now I can use my calculator to further simplify. Divide both sides by 0 0.00012, the negative 0 0.00012. I do a natural log of 0.15 divided by that, and you get your answer right there. So it would be approximately 15,800 years old. So using carbon-14 and the method of half-life, that's what the approximate, approximate age of the fossil would be. How accurate it is, um, leave that to the science teachers, but that's how you do the math behind it. So I know that co that question is kind of, um, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of little details going on there. If you have questions about it, make sure you email me. You can also look back in the book. Now, the book, I did it slightly differently than they did in the book because they went like this. They moved the 2 up to the top, so use the uh, 2 to the negative 1, and they plugged it. And then they divided by that and got rid of the negatives. So there's a slightly different method there. Um, I'm just trying to eliminate as many steps as possible. Uh, but that's how they do it in the book. So again, let me know if you guys have questions about this. Um, but that's your half-life application. All right. So remember, you guys do have your test on Thursday. I'm sorry, test. You guys have a quiz on Thursday on section 4-5 starting at 10 a.m. group 2 
Group B will be going at noon. All right. See ya.